Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs and for this review, we are looking at NECA's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 Secret of the Ooze, Toka, and Razar, or Razar, however you want to pronounce it. I think I usually actually call it Razar, but then I think I said the other day Razar, I don't know. People have different ways of saying it. Anyway, this is NECA's hold my beer moment at the end of the year. It's like, just in case we didn't do enough to get ourselves on the top 10 list or maybe even in the number one spot, let's just put out one last thing to just make sure, just to seal the deal. And I'm not saying for sure that these guys are gonna be number one or even necessarily gonna be on the top 10 list. But what I am saying is there's a good chance they're gonna be number one or at least on the top 10 list. It's uh. These might be NECA's best figures yet, as far as aesthetics go. We'll see how the articulation goes as we run the review. But, uh, goodness gracious, if... Okay, so obviously NECA does have their issues. I, we're gonna do a little talk here as these guys spin around, because I feel like talking about this. There are QC issues, we all know that, I get it. But at the same time, they're releasing stuff like this. And I know that these figures are at a higher price point based on their size and everything. But still, dollar for dollar, nobody even comes close to what NECA's doing. Honestly speaking, Storm was there when they started and their figures were like in the $40 to $60 price range. They're well beyond that now, honestly. And uh, it's not even close. Like any of the domestic companies can't hold a candle to NECA. I know a lot of people like to say McFarlane's doing a good job. Nah, not really. They're doing a good enough job for what they're doing on most releases, but it's not even close. It's just, nothing coming out right now has the same level of aesthetic as NECA's products. And most of them are articulated well enough to carry them the rest of the way. And these figures, I think, we'll see again as we go through the articulation. I played with them a little bit. These figures are a perfect example of that. It really is, like I said, a hold my beer moment. Uh, so anyway, these guys are just really phenomenal in a lot of ways. There are definitely a few downsides, which I will mention, but um, they're very small. So let's go ahead and get these guys off the stand and take a closer look. Alrighty, these guys stand roughly, this one's about 18 centimeters, this one's about 19, he's a little bit taller, which is just about perfect for the film. Of course, the amount of knee bend and things are going to affect that, but that's just about right. So it's about 7 inches. And let's say seven and a half, right around there. Obviously those aren't exact conversions, but that's a good enough estimate to give you guys an idea. And before we go into the review any further, let's do a quick question of the day. How do you feel about the second live action movie? I know people don't like it as much as the first one, but I personally think these two guys and also Shredder's design, I think that's enough to like the movie. It's not as good as the first, hands down, I, I believe that 100%. However, I think it's a perfectly suitable movie. It's perfectly fine, and uh, obviously it's way better than three, so let's not even go there. But these two character designs are awesome, especially Toka here, and I like that movie a whole bunch. So you guys can talk about that in the comment section below. All right, let's just do the aesthetic thing, even though I already mentioned it. First off, paints are through the roof. These guys are Gorgeous. They're so, so attractive. Let me just go through them one by one just a little bit here, even though this is going to be a long ass video anyway, given the two figures and all we have to talk about. But let's just look at this guy up close. Look at his shell. There's more paint right here than there is on most other domestic releases in, in their entirety. It's just so well detailed. They're shading throughout all of the skin. It looks like it stepped right out of the movie. The little spots are painted, the the spikes, the bandages, the little tire-based arm pads, the gloves, the back shell here is just gorgeous. And you can do a lot with not that much paint. There's prob probably three colors on here. And look how much detail there is. Look how well it's executed. It's not that hard to do a good job. And of course, NECA knew they were going to get their money back on these guys because who the heck isn't going to buy them. But goodness gracious, is it just well detailed. And obviously the sculpt being so good underneath the paint, that makes the paint look even better. But these guys are, as far as action figures go, about as aesthetically well done as you can get. The face, the bright red eyes, all the little details in there. And we'll get to the articulation in a little bit, but um, we do have articulated eyebrows on this guy, so you can give him a little bit of a, a little bit of different look there. Granted, it's still just an action figure, so it's not perfect, but geez, oh man, these are just so good to look at. Even if you couldn't care less about these character designs or the movie, 
you cannot deny how well these are executed. And they both have, obviously, all the same benefits. They're both painted exceptionally well, sculpted exceptionally well. Look at the eye paint on there. So nicely done. The glossy mouth, it's just perfect. Uh, I will say, the gap right here from the articulated jaw bugs me a little bit. It's not so obvious on this side, so I don't know if mine's a fluke. You guys can let me know if you have a big gap on one side from the beard, but that's hardly a big deal. The uh, the chest armor down here is really good. The fur everywhere. I mean, it's a nice tight shot so that you can see all these details. Again, more tire-based armor because they were made in a junkyard. Very, very nicely done. And we have real chains holding his armor on. It's actually held on by the chains. Very nicely done. I can't get over how well detailed these are. The rust spots, like I know this is just an accessory, but still, the rust spots on the shield. 10 out of 10 for the aesthetic as far as I'm concerned. Not actually perfect, but 10 out of 10 as far as reasonable expectations go. It's still a mass produced action figure, but goodness, you don't get better than this in terms of sculpt or paint. It's just, they're unbelievably good. And I, I don't know, I, I, I can't stress it enough how much better these look as far as collectibles go than anything else coming from domestic companies. It's not even close. All right, on to the accessories. We're just going to do them all in one batch. So they both have the loose-ish hands on them in the package, and they each get two other sets of some sort of gripping hand just to hold the different accessories. Uh, we do have the shield for Razor. We have the broken telephone pole and a pipe. You can give one of them to each of them. We have a cardboard box for um, some donuts. The donuts are all actually one sculpt in there, but they do fit in the box nicely, so that's cool. And then we get the one crushed donut with the uh, chemicals inside, uh, the ice cube. And then we get a TGRI canister and we get a uh, fire extinguisher, which I think is plenty of accessories for this set. Uh, probably more than anybody needed to be happy, and that is awesome. So. Um, I can't think of anything else we would rather have. Um, is there anything? I can't think of anything. Uh, 10 out of 10 for accessories. <laughs> I, I can't think of anything we would need for these guys. If you can, let me know in the comment section below and I'll be happy to hear your thoughts. It's only been a few years since I saw this, but I can't think of any more accessories. Uh, maybe a sewer grate for this guy to get stuck in, <laughs> but that's about it. Okay, let's move on to the articulation. We'll do Toka first because he was in my right hand and I don't know why. All right, so the neck on this guy lets him look all the way around. We have ball pegs at the top and at the bottom of the neck. It's just perfectly articulated. It looks good in every pose. This just goes to show ball pegs are the master of posing. The more ball pegs, the better. They're not perfect for every situation, but for most situations, they are going to be your best bet. And NECA does a really good job with their ball pegs most of the time. Uh, we have a ball peg on the nose, which lets this articulate just a little bit for the uh, facial features. And like I said, we have the articulated eyebrows. Now they do pivot in the back. So you end up with them not being quite centered as much as they are when they're down forward, but you do have that, which is a really cool feature. They didn't need to include in, obviously there's no downside. You can't even really tell that they're articulated unless you're at a perfect angle. The mouth does open as well, and that's also very accurate the way that looks. So that's pretty cool. Let me adjust the camera a little bit here. These guys are bigger than I thought. Oh boy, if I had a nickel. Okay, so the shoulders, have spikes on them and I haven't tried to move the shoulders yet. So we're gonna find out together what kind of range we get and how, how good that turns out. I will say they're very well hidden in the sculpt. So at least there's that going for them. So far, I'm not getting any movement out of the shoulder at all. Let's try this side. Okay, this side is fine. So that one I'll just have to break free. It probably has some paint stickage. So full rotation, no issues there. How's the hinge gonna work? It looks like it'll go down. Yeah, so it goes down almost completely to the side. That's awesome. And going up, yeah, not quite horizontal, but I think that's probably acceptable. Uh, again, NECA does lean into the aesthetic, and boy, do they succeed at that. So I can forgive a little bit of limited range in the shoulder. That's okay. There is no bicep swivel. I do personally prefer a bicep swivel over these giant double-jointed elbows, but you do get the double-jointed elbow. So that's using the top joint right there, and you get 90 degrees, and that's where you're going to get your main bicep swivel. So I think that's okay. And then there is a second joint down here to get better than 90 degrees. Let's see if we can actually use it, if it'll work. Yeah, there we go. So he's got big hands, so I don't know where we're gonna actually put the arm. 
but you get really good range out of it. And because of the thickness of the guy and the elbow pads, that big chunky double jointed elbow works fine for this. Uh, I don't like it on the skinnier figures at all, like Casey Jones had it and things like that, but this, I'm okay with it. That works just fine. The wrists have a swivel because they're interchangeable, of course, and they have a hinge, which is fine. There is technically a joint in here for the top body to move around. I don't know if it's actually supposed to articulate or if it's just a matter of that's how they had to assemble the figure. I can't really get mine to move and I don't mind because I think it would look weird with the shell not moving anyway. So if it's not there, good. And if it is there, well, you like that good, but I'm perfectly okay with mine not working. I'm gonna have to try to free that up later. That is totally properly stuck. Probably some hair dryer action will free that up no problem, but that is the way it is. Now for the hips, we have the ball peg hips, which they have had some looseness issues on other releases. Let's see how they work on this guy. They go all the way out to the side, no problem. They are not loose so far in that direction. Let's see going forward. Uh, going forward, we're definitely a little bit more limited in the range. Again, it'll probably be enough for these guys. I don't have any looseness issue, so that's good. Hey, they nailed the ball pegs on the figures that matter most this year. That's awesome. You do get a thigh swivel out of them. Uh, double jointed knees, you're gonna have a swivel here and here. I don't know how well that's gonna be helpful, but you do have it, and you get really good range out of that bend, so no issues there at all. That's awesome. And then lastly, we have our ankles, which have really nice range going backwards. You might even be able to get a little bit more out of that. And going forward, really nice range going forward as well, and a proper, really well executed ankle rocker. So, for all intents and purposes, this guy is articulated just fine. Uh, there's a couple spots, obviously, that are more limited, but for somebody shaped like this and with this level of detail, I think that is perfectly acceptable. So his articulation, we'll do them individually, his articulation is going to get, for this figure, a 9 out of 10. Now, obviously, that's not a 9 out of 10 for an SH Figure Arts uh, Dragon Ball figure, for instance. A 9 out of 10 on that would be better articulated, but that's not what this is. So very well done here. Let's check out Razar. Oops. All right, so his head, you're probably thinking it's not gonna articulate well, that's what I was thinking. You can look all the way up without getting any gapping going on really at all. Look all the way down, side to side. Of course his beard gets in the way, there's nothing they could do about that, but attitude, pretty much anything you wanna do with his head, you can do it. And we have the same situation with ball pegs at the top and bottom of the neck, so that is awesome. And he does have the articulated jaw, no articulation in the face, but just to show you the detail, hopefully you'll be able to see it. They even got his uvula, or uvula, in there. Focus in the mouth, there you go. They really went all out on this, so kudos to NECA. I, I, they knew people were gonna buy these, and instead of going the cheap route and making them cheaper because they're gonna make a lot of money on them no matter what, they really poured everything they could into them. So big props to a company that does that rather than cashing out. These guys are doing what they should do for their customers. All right, so let's try the shoulders out. The shoulder pads are soft and connected to the back here, um, but they shouldn't really get in the way too much, I think. Let's see. Yeah, so his arm raises up even a little bit better than the other guy, so that's pretty good. And of course, we have our full rotation. That's where the shoulder pad's gonna get in the way, but it stretches enough that it doesn't look terrible unless you keep going all the way up, so. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, obviously it's not ideal for a shoulder pad to be fixed to the body like that, but it'll get the job done. No bicep swivel again. We have the same type of double jointed elbow on this guy. Let's check the range first. That's the bottom joint. You get 90 out of that. I'm afraid I'm going to break this chain because there's chain wrapped all the way around him. I don't want to accidentally slip and rip that. Let me try this arm. So the hands do unpeg. That's what I'm saying. You have to be careful. Anytime you have stuck joints, you really should heat them up first. And this is exactly how it came out of the package. There we go. If you know how to handle them, you're probably gonna be okay. I haven't broken a figure in a long time. That was actually my fault. But really good bend out of that elbow. But good bend out of the elbow doesn't look bad because of that double jointed elbow, just because of the fur and everything, so that's okay. Wrists have a swivel and a hinge, and your bicep swivel works well enough. Now he does have a diaphragm joint in there, which is functional. However, like I said, I don't wanna mess up that chain. Love the anatomy on this guy too, by the way. They really got it, because that's what he looked like in the movie. There's some scenes, or at least you can find images of him without the armor on, and uh, they did a very beefy looking sculpt back then, and this figure matches that. So he does have a nice diaphragm joint. Uh, be very careful as you're posing it. And it's not like you're gonna be in Spider-Man type poses, 
but it's uh it's pretty well articulated especially when you get this over the crotch and under the beard you can bend that guy's torso a lot i don't think there's anything in here let's see can i move that yeah it doesn't feel like there's anything down here at the lower torso but that upper torso diaphragm joint is as good as you could expect it to be now i have one issue with mine and that is that his butt cheek stuck to his diaper apparently and i got this transfer of paint and a little bit of sculpt onto the leg. Luckily that's in the back and mostly hidden. Hopefully you guys don't have that problem. That's probably just a unique issue to mine because it didn't happen on this side. So that's a bummer, but probably not a big deal. The legs do go pretty much all the way out to the side. Plenty of range we are on the ball pegs again. They are not loose, so that's a good thing. They go far enough forward that I'm okay with it. Um, I wouldn't have minded if they squeaked out a little bit better range because they have this and this is already soft So they probably could have but it's still plenty. I think it'll be okay. You get your thigh swivel double jointed knees It's the same type of articulation as the other guy just a different sculpt So his is definitely a little bit more limited. Maybe you could fudge that around a little bit. Oh, no I'm sorry. It's single jointed knee. What am I saying? I said double. It's not the same It's a single jointed knee with a swivel at the top. That's why you get less range Good grief, I need to get more sleep, but that's enough range for him. And then for the ankles, all the way back, and not as far forward, but it'll do. As you can see, his knees are already bent and his feet are pretty much flat, so that's okay. And you get a decent enough ankle rocker. So again, for any reasonable metric, this guy is very well articulated. Uh, I'll give it a nine out of 10 for the articulation. These guys, for how good they look, and how well they're articulated and the amount of accessories, I really don't think we could have asked for more unless we were gonna double the price point. I mean, NECA really went all out on these guys and I wasn't really, I mean, I was joking in the beginning talking about it being number one and top 10 and everything because I hadn't reviewed them yet, but there's no freaking doubt that these guys are gonna be somewhere near the top of the list in some capacity. Um, just excellent, excellent releases from NECA. So as a two pack overall, uh, nine point, nine out of ten it's just it's probably one of the best if not the best things i've reviewed per dollar ever that's it neca blew it out of the water hit it out of the park did some other saying that makes the point also there's just almost nothing wrong with them short of things that you're gonna have and with any mass-produced figure um it's just excellent they're so excellent. If I didn't have the paint transfer, honestly, on uh, Razar, I'd probably just have given these guys a 10. And that probably would have been my first 10 out of 10 overall rating. But uh, I have to be fair, and I do have the paint transfer there, and a few issues like the crooked beard, but it's still probably the best rated thing I've reviewed ever. So there you go, guys. Let me know what you think about this set in the comment section below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. And if you haven't subscribed, you should. I have new videos almost every single day and thousands already on the channel. So make sure you come back for all of that. And in the meantime, keep collecting.